All right, so what we're going to do is uh, teach you a little bit more on how to use the sketcher. The PowerPoint tells you what to do, but it doesn't really explain how to do it. And so far, I mean, you've made two circles. That's great. I'm proud uh, of you. But uh, let's try something a bit more complex. Go over to the ZX plane, go into sketch mode, and see how I'm, I'm already in it. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to start with making our line. And you want that to have the blue diagonal to know that it's vertical. And that blue highlighting so that you know that it's constrained in the vertical region. Alright, so now we go here, we hit the constraints button, and we're going to constrain it so that it is only 130 millimeters long. You don't have to write the units if that's your default. Alright, so we've got that constraint, and now we go back over here. Come on, back over. Okay. And now you want to click this little dot that's way up here. You want to click you want to click down here on the horizontal bar. And that is 60 millimeters, of course. All right. So the big thing here is this button right here. Um I really like using projected 3D elements. I think it makes things a lot easier when you have something to kind of use as a guide and and we clicked that while we had this selected that's what the problem was but let's click it again okay now let's go over here and we're gonna click this dashed line and what this lets us do is make construction elements that don't actually affect the sketch except they kinda let us reference and we're gonna find we're gonna we're gonna take the projected thing okay we're gonna click that and we're gonna click this circle right here and now we've got this yellow dash line that we can work off of go way back up here click that again come down and we're gonna make a circle and that circle is gonna be in the exact center of the yellow dash circle we just made and then it's gonna be coincident to this point up here that we constrained earlier now right now we're just gonna leave this as one whole circle I know later I know later it's gonna be it's it's not gonna be a whole circle and that's fine but right now we're gonna leave it as a circle just uh, just so that we can get our, our bearings on the whole thing alright <clears throat> so next we're gonna make another circle okay and this one uh, we're gonna make small and we're gonna kinda just not gonna constrain it right now uh, we're gonna go dimensions and we're gonna change this to radius because that's what the the the, the thing uses all right the PowerPoint uses and we're gonna change this to 10.5 and now you can see over here on the slides I'm looking at that it's got a comma and that's a big problem uh, these slides were translated to English so their syntax is a bit different uh, but not to worry uh, most of the time when you see a comma it's gonna be a decimal point and if it is a comma you'll be able to tell <laughs> alright so now it's the correct size we're just gonna constrain it uh, 19 on the horizontal let's get that right there All right, and we're gonna constrain that 19 on the horizontal and then we also know that that point is also on the vertical it's offset by 16 and yeah I know that cuts into our other circle and that's fine we're gonna we're gonna remove all of that later but for right now we're gonna make a tangent line between the two and that'll be that's a little nice pretty tangent line that looks that looks about right and actually that's it for this slide okay so I want you to go over here if you if you're able to view both like I am okay and then we're gonna we're gonna bring up the next slide and so it's it's got new constraints and we're gonna do those and I know I'm kind of leaving stuff <laughs> I'm leaving a lot of stuff uh, right here but that can be cleaned up later if we destroy it now we kind of ruin some constraints and we we just don't want to deal with that so next we're gonna take this we're gonna we're, we're gonna take a circle we're gonna come over here we're gonna make it the exact center again and you gotta be careful not to get it constrained to anything else so watch out for it trying to and we're gonna make that a radius of 22 okay now 
just for my sake and yours, I am going to clean up a bit. Okay, I'm going to clean house. And remove a bit of these lines. Uh, it's it's a bit slower once you've got so many intersecting. But I think it's it's really worth it to, to wait the extra time before doing it. You, you don't want to mess up anything too soon. Okay, I think that's good for right now. Um, let's go back over here. We're going to click that, click that. Now we've got another tangent line right there. Okay, I'll give you a second while I clean up some more. Now that we got that line, we don't have to worry about these here. Let's click that one and that one. Okay. Now, the next part, <sighs> taken at face value, can be really tricky. Uh, just because you can see here there's this radius right here, this radius of 2. And then later on, you got another radius of 2. But what they don't tell you is this handy button right here. And this will make fillets for us. So we're going to switch back over to the line button. Okay. We're going to make a line. It's going to be vertically constrained. Okay. Next, we constrain it 14, 14 millimeters away. And it's it's a bit long from the final product, but that's fine. It, it, we can shrink it in a minute here when we need to. And we're going to click either you can click these two after clicking the fillet button. Or you can select the dot. Either one, or I guess not in this case. Okay, I'm sorry. Uh, so select the circle, select the line. And you've got a nice little fillet that you can adjust the radius of. And so now you have this two... This radius of two circle, it's tangent to both lines, and at this point, you've got a good portion of the thing done. Uh, you've got one more final slide, I believe, or two. Alright, and I'm just for my sake, I'm going to zoom that out so I can see the constraints again. Uh, <laughs> unfortunately for me, I can't memorize all 50 constraints per piece, so. Alright, so next we're going to make a circle and and I know it's it's way down here I know uh, it, it's not touching anything uh, it doesn't really make sense I know I know you're confused that's fine we're gonna make this 12 okay <clears throat> next it's got a it's got some distance away from the line here and that's gonna be 40 okay and let's let's move this out of the way. It's kind of in the way there. Uh, you can click the arrows to adjust this, and you can click the number to adjust the number. All right. Now this line is a bit long, so we're going to shorten it up just so that we can get an idea of what's going on. Um, next, we want a line, and that line is going to go from here, and it's just going to go here. And what that's going to let us do is say that this and this have tangency. Now, they're still not touching. Um, that's fine. We're going to come, we're going to zoom in so we can really get a good eyeball on this dot right here. We're going to click the dot, click the circle. Tell it coincidence. That means that th at, it, at some point they have to touch. And, and we've also defined that it has to be tangent. So we can move this and adjust this sort of and that's not a big deal because guess what and now we're gonna constrain it some more uh... we're gonna constrain right here we're gonna click the dot when i can hit it and we're gonna click the horizontal and we're gonna set this to forty two and now this can't be moved this can't be moved well this can be moved still and then here's Here's the last little bit. We're at the finish line here. All right, and now see this time you can select the dots. Uh, it's just on curves you can't select the dot. Now this is B2, and our final constraint of the day will be to go up here or zoom back in once you uh, select your constraints. Click that dot, and we want that dot to be a distance away from the horizontal. We want that distance to be 20. Now this whole thing is stuck. It can't move. It's, it's, it's good to go. And we got one last curve to make. This one's real easy. Uh, anyone can do it. It's not hard at all. What I'm going to do special is I'm going to make 
the starting circle just this this right here this this uh this construction element and then instead of having to erase the entire circle I'm gonna pick circle arc and what that's gonna let me do is click right here in the center again undo construction elements before you forget click right here or down here it, it doesn't matter I'm gonna click down here just for for fun and then you gotta move it up and that just made a lovely little arc that fits perfect and we can delete that construction element now it's over constrained that's fine um, it probably won't be in a second when we erase some stuff uh, double click on an item to make it basically active until you click it again and I think I erased everything uh, see that unconstrained a few spots over constraints never really a problem unless it's causing an error uh, and it looks like we're clean now I'm a human uh, you're human so we're probably gonna make mistakes that's why we're gonna click this right here and we're gonna see see it says over constrained but what's special is it shows these little dots of where it's over constrained and that's the important part uh, we can see that if we if we delete this right here that'll that'll get rid of uh, our over constraints and we we click it again and we see it's under constrained okay what is what is that doing to us it's it's allowing this to change it's allowing that to change so we have a bit of a problem here um, something's wrong something's not something's broken okay and that's fine um, we all do it uh, but what we're gonna do here we know that this looks good right here at this point uh, what's wrong right here is that this is not tangent uh, things happen that's why I didn't want to erase too soon uh, I probably still did we're just gonna select tangent again that's gonna be tangent this arc circle can be made to change that's that's fine um, what it's what's nice though is we can also make more construction elements imagine that uh, we're gonna put one here we're gonna just make it big it, it really doesn't matter we're gonna go up and see what was that again that was a radius of 10.5 so we make that radius 10.5 on the construction element and now we've got this handy guide and we take that guide and we constrain it with that circle that's now no longer constrained because of what we did earlier and so we've got that and we're gonna bring this down uh... let's see do we know anything about how this fits oh it's tangent and again <laughs> we have a problem it's not it's not tangent right here and that's that's a big deal uh... not everything has to be completely constrained uh... a lot of times i'll use sketches that are almost completely white uh, the reason that is is uh... if you get it in the right spot and you don't touch it and you know it's all right it's fine uh, in this situation here we want to make sure because this is a part and accuracy is a factor that everything is green and so you've got you've got this part it's green it's constrained uh... if you want <laughs> you can go over here it's iso constrained uh... you'd see little uh... almost like ripple looking dots similar to a bunch of small o's together Sim it, it, basically what we saw when it was over constrained if you've got elements that aren't part of the profile and what that means is you've got something that will cause errors in the sketch when you try to use it and if I delete uh, moving on from that point um, if you're having a problem basically uh, the key here is let's say you're trying to extrude something and it says uh, there's something not in the profile or it's an open profile you gotta come over here you gotta select this this right here this sketch solving status uh, find it wherever it is on your toolbar I have things adjusted for myself the way I like them uh, so they may be a little different come in here find that dot whatever use the eraser tool or just delete it it, 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 it doesn't matter um, as long as you don't ruin the sketch or click the wrong thing um, and just to show you an example of when I could use a white sketch see I, I know this is alright 
but this yellow circle is the thing constraining it basically the center I could set the center as an anchor point and see we can delete this we can select that point and we can go over here and we can tell it fix and what that'll do that'll reconstrain it it's now that's not gonna move and we can do the same thing with this point right here basically telling it that point will never move no matter what you do and see now it's over constrained which again it's it's fine but we're gonna leave it like this I like it like this this is nice construction elements kinda give you an idea of of basically what's going on there's there's no need to not leave those in there if I was looking at someone's work and I saw construction elements that tells me they were planning it that tells me what they did to get to that step without going over here going down to sketch and looking at all the constraints you know all the geometry because this will tell you every point every line every circle every fillet they do but it's it's not it's not convenient and so now you have your point you exit out of sketcher and you're on to the next one which will take similar techniques I know this video is kinda long so I understand uh, some of us don't need to watch it all that's fine uh, there's great tutorials online as well if this didn't help you but hopefully it did uh, definitely uh, made me remember how complex that uh, piece right there is alrighty thanks